Okay, so here's a deck of flashcards to take you through uh, C2.1, the first topic in uh, AQA's GCSE uh, for unit um, for C2A. Okay, so the topic's called structure and bonding. Here we go. So, first question define the term compound. Okay, so a compound is two or more different elements that are chemically bonded together. Next one. What type of atoms form ionic compounds? Okay. You need a metal and a non-metal. What type of atoms form covalent compounds? Okay. You need two or more non-metals. Okay, so the right hand side of the periodic table. What type of atoms form metallic structures? Okay. A bit more straightforward, that one. You need metals. Okay. In terms of electrons, what happens during ionic bonding? Okay. So the metals are going to lose electrons and the non-metals are going to gain electrons. Okay. Next one. In terms of electrons, what happens in covalent bonding? The non-metal elements are going to share electrons. Okay, so in ionic bonding, it's giving electrons, receiving electrons. In covalent bonding, sharing. Okay, in terms of electrons, again, what happens in metallic bonding? The third type of bonding. Okay, the metal atom is going to lose an electron. Okay, which becomes delocalized and is able to move through the whole structure. Okay, what information does the group number tell you about an element? Okay, it tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell, okay, which is really useful when you want to do any sort of uh, bonding diagrams. Okay, so let's have a go at this. How many electrons are in the outer shell of a sodium atom? Oh, okay, yeah, one, okay, and that's because it's in group one. Okay, so if you get a periodic table, you'll find sodium, it's in group one which tell you there's one electron in the outer shell. In terms of bonding, it's only the outer shell electrons that we're interested in, okay? Okay, so what's the charge of a sodium atom? Sodium ion, okay, is plus one, okay, because it's losing a negative electron, then it ends up being plus one charge. Okay, why does a sodium atom form ions with a charge of plus one? Okay, just explain that. Okay, so, it's got one electron in its outer shell, okay? To get an empty outer shell, it's gonna lose that one electron, okay? And so it, do, it does that to get an empty outer shell, okay? So it's losing one electron to get an empty outer shell. And the reason it's doing that, the underlying reason is to get this phrase, which is trying to get a noble gas configuration, okay? So it becomes stable if it's got an empty or a full outer shell. So how many electrons are there in the outer shell of a chlorine atom? Okay, seven. Right, grab a periodic table, see the chlorine's in group seven. Okay, so therefore, what's the charge then of a chloride ion? Notice that for non-metals, when you form an ion, the ending changes and you add, an, you chop, chop, chop off the end of the atom and you add iron onto the end. Okay, it's minus one. Okay, the reason why it forms an ion with a charge of minus one. Okay, so your starting point is that it's got seven electrons in its outer shell. Okay, so to try and get a, a full outer shell, it needs eight electrons to get a full outer shell. It's going to gain one electron. Okay, just a reminder here to remind you that electrons are negative. Okay, and again, just like before with the sodium, it's doing this to get a full or an empty outer shell, okay, and to get this phrase, a noble gas configuration. Okay, so now we've got a, uh, there's a few examples now here of drawing um, bonding, covalent ionic bonding as diagrams. Okay, so to draw the bonding, the bonding diagram for sodium chloride, okay, looks like this, okay, and I've colour coded it for you so you can see that sodium, which did have one electron in its outer shell, Okay, has given that electron to the chlorine. Okay, so the sodium has no electrons in its outer shell, so it's stable, but it's lost an electron, so it's plus one charge. The chlorine atom had seven of its own electrons 
It's gained one from the sodium, so now it's got a charge of one minus. Okay, looking at that for now. So uh, to show a bonding diagram for magnesium oxide. Okay. So um, similar to the last one. Okay, the metal had, would have had two electrons in its has shell. Okay, which are these two that are now over here with the oxygen. So it's a charge of two plus. The oxygen has now got a full outer shell of eight electrons, but to do that, it's gained one, two electrons from the magnesium, so it has a charge of two minus. Okay, um, it's empty O because these charges need to balance, so that's why there's one magnesium for every one oxygen. Okay, I've made a little video tutorial for balancing charges if you need some more explanation for that one. Okay, uh, right, next one then, uh, show a bonding diagram for calcium chloride. Okay, so calcium is in group two, it's got two electrons in its outer shell. Chlorines are in group seven, so we've got seven electrons in their outer shell. Each chlorine needs one electron, so one electron from the calcium goes there, the other electron from the calcium goes there. Okay, so calcium is two plus, the two chlorides are one minus, okay, and the charge is balanced, two plus, and two lots of one minus, which is why calcium chloride is CaCl2. Okay. Next one, draw a diagram to show the bonding in hydrogen. Okay, now hydrogen is made up of two non-metals, so it's covalent bonding this time. Okay, and the way you draw that diagram is to have the shells, orbitals overlapping. Okay, one electron from hydrogen, the blue hydrogen, one electron from the red hydrogen, two electrons to show the covalent bond in the middle, which you can write as H2, or you can draw it like this, where this line here represents the single covalent bond. Okay, chlorine, so Cr2, so again it's two non-metals, okay, so this is covalent bonding, okay, and you draw the diagram like this, okay, so each, the red chlorine here has got seven electrons, the blue electron, the blue chlorine's got seven electrons, okay, and, but to get a full outer shell, they share one each across the middle, okay, so you write that Cr2 or chlorine with a line between another chlorine. Okay, uh, oxygen this time, so again, two non-metals. Okay, so it's covalent bonding. The difference here is that to get a full shell, you need to do what's called a double bond. Okay, so between the two oxygens, we've got two pairs of electrons. Okay, both atoms have eight electrons in their shells in total. You can write that as an oxygen with, so this is not an equal sign. Okay, this is a, a double bond. Okay, between the two oxygens, where you write it as O2. Okay, let's take another one. Hydrogen chloride. Okay, so this time we've got, right, hydrogen you can argue is a metal or a non-metal. Okay, you can actually draw this diagram in two ways, um, um, but we're going to go for the, uh, the covalent method. Okay, so hydrogen needs two electrons in its outer shell. It gets that by sharing uh, an electron with the chlorine. Chlorine needs to get eight. Okay, so you have the, between the hydrogen and the chlorine, the pair of electrons, again, you represent the line, or you can write HCl. Okay, water. Okay, you don't have to draw this on this angle, okay. Uh, it is slightly more the shape, um, it doesn't matter if you've drawn the hydrogen over here. Okay, so you have oxygen with its, is in group six, so it's got six, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outer shell. It wants to get eight, so it shares one pair with one hydrogen and another pair with a second hydrogen. So the oxygen has now got eight, the hydrogens have both got two, so it's nice and happy. Okay, again, you can draw that as two, an oxygen with two single bonds coming off it, or how you've more commonly seen it probably at uh, no school uh, in your education is H2A. Okay, let's try another one then, ammonia, so NH3. So two non-metals, okay, so it's covalent bonding. Okay, and you draw that like this. So you've got nitrogen with one, two, three, four, five of its own electrons. Okay, so it needs three more electrons to get a full outer shell. So that means it needs to form three covalent bonds. So one there, one there, and one there. And you can write like this, bond, 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 and actually. Okay. Next one then, methane, CH4. 
Okay, very similar to the ammonia one, except carbon's only got four electrons. So there's one, two, three, four, the red electrons for carbon. So it needs to form four covalent bonds, and you draw that by um, pairing each uh, of carbon's electrons up with an electron from a hydrogen. Okay, and the last one, probably the easiest one to draw, is uh, metallic bonding. Okay, we're using the example here of sodium. Okay, so it's a metal, so therefore it's metallic bonding. Okay, and you need to draw a diagram that looks something like this. Okay, so positive ions arranged in a regular pattern. Okay, because remember, so each of the sodiums has lost its electron. And then around all of those uh, positive ions uh, is the electrons, and you can just put this cloud around it and just label it a sea of delocalized electrons. Okay, done. Okay, so that's uh, C2.1, structure and bonding.